All right, this is a lectures 4, 1 through 4, 3. Uh, so we're just going to begin with section 4, 1 with exponential functions. So again, in the past, we've talked about, we're, fam we're familiar with the behavior of algebraic functions given as such, where your f of x might be something like x squared or x to the power of 2, x to the power of a half, x to some other constant. We know the behavior of these type of functions where you have a variable raised to a power. Well, in this section, what we're going to do, we're going to switch the roles of the variable with the constant power. So instead of a variable raised to a constant power, now we're going to do a constant raised to a variable power. By doing this, we obtain an important class of functions called exponential functions. Given with these examples, you might have something like f of x equals 2 to the power of x, g of x equals 1 tenth to the power of x, and so on. So again, we have a constant raised to a variable power. These are called exponential functions. In general, we can use any positive base where your a is not equal to 1. Your base here is a 2. Your base here is 1 tenth. Your base here is a 9. So again, in general, we can use any positive base where your a is not equal to 1. Because if you use your a equal to 1, it's just going to give you a constant function. It's always just going to be 1. So we're going to define the exponential function. If you, as let me see, if you have a positive a, where your a is not one, then the exponential function with the given base of a is given by this. This is just an exponential function. A is your positive number, not equal to one. Raise to some variable power. So if we look at some properties of exponents, if a and b are positive numbers then you have these properties that go where you have some positive number to the power of 0 is 1 or if you have a base of a to the power of x times another base of a to the power of y you add the exponents I think this follows from your normal understanding for exponents you know so it's, it's nothing really new going on with this part just with properties of exponents okay so with example 1 we want to simplify each expression using the properties of exponents. Again, we went over this one. You should know how to do this. This follows from the normal notions that you get with uh, exponents. For instance, here, you have the same base. You add the exponents if you're multiplying. So you're going to add your exponents. Here, it's the same thing. If you add your exponents, you say 2 plus a negative 3, which is 2 minus 3, and so on. And I, again, I think you, you guys know how to handle these exponents at this point. So what we want to do in this section, um, again in the past when we've introduced sketching or sketching of a new concept, an initial new concept, we'll start with um, the point plotting method. So in, in example two, this is an example on graphing exponential functions. We just want to sketch the graph of each exponential function where a we're given f of x equals 2 to the power x b is g of x equals 2 to the minus x and h is 3 to the power of x so what we did I think you you guys graph is blank so I think we went over this um, these are the x values we're choosing we're finding the corresponding y values so for part a is line 1 part b is line 2 and part c is line 3 and then if you plot these, like for instance for a, when x is 3, your y is 1 over 8. So for a, when your x is 3, your y is 1 over 8. When x is a minus 2, your y is 1 fourth, and so on. So you should know how to plot this. So that first line again is for a, which you see here. Your second line is for b, and so on. And your c is here. Okay, so you plot the points. Now this gives you... These are the these three graphs are the general forms of exponentials. So the forms of the graphs of these three examples, or this previous examples with these three parts, are the typical graphs of y equal a to the minus x and y equals a to the x, where your a again is, is strictly greater than one. Okay. So these are the general forms of exponentials that might be manipulated, shifted, or stretched based on whatever case you're looking at or flipped
but these are the general forms. So here are some uh, basic characteristics of these two graphs. Again on the left we have y equals a to the minus x and then on the right we have y equals a to the x. And then this just gives you some characteristics where your domain is negative infinity to infinity, your range is zero to infinity, and you know so on and so on. So this just kind of gives you some properties. So again, section 4.1 was just an introduction on exponential functions and just what we mean by an exponential with a constant base raised to a variable power. So in section 4.2, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into some of these notions on exponentials and look at um, a more sp specific example. So section 4.2 is the natural exponential function. So in the previous section, again, we introduced exponentials having an unspecified base. Again, that base, A, could have been any positive number not equal to 1. So in calculus, the most convenient or natural choice for a base is the irrational number, E. It's given by this approximation you see here. And again, we'll discuss later why we're choosing E or why we consider it a natural choice. It'll, we'll, we'll revisit this notion, I think, in the next section. So the limit definition of E. So we're going to define the irrational number E to be the limit of this equation here as x goes to 0. So that is the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x. We're defining that limit to be E. So if we want to sketch the graph of E to the x, again, we, we just chose, we're doing um point plotting method, we're going to choose some x values, find the corresponding y's. So when x is a minus 2 and so on, here are your corresponding approximations for E. And then also with this notion we can talk about a horizontal asymptote. Um, as x goes to positive infinity, this blows up to infinity. So going off to the right of the graph, the function goes off to infinity. But going off to the left of the graph, the, the function approaches zero. And again, this isn't, you don't really say, you know, 1 over e to the infinity. This is just for teaching purposes. So you see, okay, it's, it's kind of like saying this. This isn't something that you actually do. But this is just saying the limit as x gets closer and closer to negative infinity is going to be the same as the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 1 over e to the x. But then that limit, that limit is going to be, is going to approach 0 as x goes to minus infinity or as x goes to infinity here. So in other words, as the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger with that fixed numerator, this whole term here gets closer and closer and closer to 0. Okay. And then just the plot of the solutions that we got in the above table are given as such. As you see the general form of e to the x. So now let's look at a discussion on compound interest. Again, generally with interest, you would have what your, if you wanted to calculate, if you wanted to add interest onto something, you would take your initial amount and then whatever plus your rate times your initial amount. So then if you factor out your initial amount, you're going to have your initial amount times 1 plus your rate. So let's just take a look at a discussion on compound interest. Say you have an initial, if you have P dollars is deposited into an account with an annual interest rate of R in decimal form, what's the balance after a year? So this answer depends on the number of times the interest is compounded according to this formula. 